This is Truth Bronco with Bill Ward. On this channel, you'll see many different things. You'll hear many different things. I promise you it will all be the truth. We'll talk about the Bible. We'll talk about grizzly bear confrontations that I have had personally. We'll call coyotes and we'll be in the Rocky Mountains in the north country of the United States of America and we will be down here where I am right now filming the Colorado River and the northern stretches of Lake Havasu in Arizona. I want you to follow my videos as the numbers go. They'll be numbered beginning with the ghost of the angel, number one, followed up by Mary's song and the many lives of Mary. I have written all the songs that you'll see on my videos. They're all originals. If you don't follow them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc., then you'll have trouble understanding the symbolism that is in the next video to come. I hope you enjoy it and please subscribe and do all those other things that are necessary, including the thumbs up to see more videos. Welcome everyone to my 19th video in my angelic series of videos. And it is entitled, The Meek That Are Bold. And before I get to that, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about my previous video, a uh, ways back that was entitled, Rattlesnake. It's been noised about that by a few people that I filmed the first part of that last and the second part of that first, just filming rattlesnake crawling and then the first part of it uh, depicting that um, you're concocting the story. That is not true. The way that video was filmed was exactly as it happened. There was a break between the first part and the second part and that's when I pulled my car away from the rattlesnake and then turned it around so it was parallel to the rattlesnake so I began filming the rattlesnake as it was crawling where it was under from where it was under my car and that's when I started filming the second part of that until it went to the end and the reason why I say that now is because that was a very very um, uh, miraculous uh, happening in my life the uh, that was extremely um, um, strange, really. That rattlesnake uh, broke all the rules of men versus rattlesnakes and rattlesnakes versus men. <clears throat> Not that it's 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 a fight all the time. It's danger, extreme danger though, because they can kill you. That western diamondback was about five feet long, and um, they are very, very venomous. And if you're not going to die, if you get some help at a, uh, at a hospital, um, good chance you're going to survive. It's going to be pretty awful. So what were the miracles that took place? Well, number one, rattlesnakes, snakes, period, really don't like to be out in the open like that because they don't want to get eaten by something, um, an eagle or something like that. A roadrunner. There are roadrunners around here that could kill that rattlesnake. They, they don't want that. They don't want to be out in the open. Um, people can kill those rattlesnakes. They don't want to be exposed to that danger. So for a rattlesnake just to not be chased out of the Thule's and to just kind of crawl up, and he did, just crawled up on, I never knew that rattlesnake was there until I heard this rattle. I was fixing these hooks, I was looking down and, and I wasn't paying any attention to anything around me. I did not expect a rattlesnake to crawl up on me. Now, if I had been walking through the Thule's uh, or something like that, that would have been a whole different story. I would have been on high alert. Um, but I wasn't. I was leaning up next to my car. And here this rattle takes place. And, and it was different than a rattle. It was a buzz. And, um, and the difference was, but always when I'd ride horseback, um, in the Merino Valley area, which is different than how it was now. I mean, this is back when I was in my teens, riding horses around there. There were 8,000 people in the whole city of Sunnymead. And, you know, 1,200 kids in Merino Valley High School, which is where I went. So, you know, I was 
confronted with rattlesnakes on occasion riding our horses through the desert. And and I, and it was always kind of a you know type of a thing instead of a bzzz, not bzzz, not like a b but uh, faster than than just a like that. And I was hearing the faster type of a thing, and I really hadn't heard that before. And um, and I watched a video and I watched a rattlesnake go a, a western diamondback a diamondback rattlesnake. I watched on this video. I watched it go from um, a relaxed rattle of "Hey, watch out! Hey, watch out! You know, don't you hurt me? I'm gonna bite you. Don't you get close to me? I'm gonna bite you." To a "Whoa, you're close to me! I'm gonna bite you!" type of a thing where the rattle, the tail shakes really, really fast and almost goes to type of a buzz. That's how this rattle was from this Western Diamondback rattlesnake from the get-go. Because he apparently, and I don't know why it would be the case, because I was making movements and and uh, with my hands and, and, and biting down on these hooks with pliers and making clicking noises and all kinds of stuff. I mean, I was moving around right out in the open too. And this rattlesnake crawled like probably 15 20 yards in the open up on me and didn't stop until he was about four feet away from me and then coiled up and then began to rattle and then I heard the noise and then I looked where's that coming from and I looked up and right down by my feet four feet away was this five foot long diamondback rattlesnake with a high buzzing type of a rattle going on he was earnest immediately um, it wasn't like and then, whoa, I'm really ticked off at you. It was like, oh, I'm really ticked off at you and I'm gonna bite you from the get-go. And, uh, and I thought within a tenth of a second, really, really fast, do I freeze or do I move? And it was real quick move. And I jumped to the to the right and back away. And I said in the video, it's about 10 yards that I walked, got away from. I wasn't past the nose of my car, and the car is not 10 yards long, so I probably quit moving when I was about 10 feet away from him. Clearly you know, a safe range, though. And then he dropped down into a crawling position and crawled underneath my car. So that really happened. So there's miracle number one, that he stopped at four feet instead of two feet. He could have easily got, and that's right at the end of his strike zone at four feet, because a five footer, he could strike three and a half feet, um, two thirds of the distance of his body. But to go four feet, maybe, that's kind of nip and tuck though for him to be able to reach his target. So um, there's another miracle. He stopped four feet instead of two feet or one foot, um, three feet, right there within striking distance of me because I didn't know he was there. Um, and, and then he crawled underneath my my car and he waited i looked right away to see if he crawled out from under my car and he hadn't when i looked under the car from a distance i could see him under there um so i knew that he went under my car and he stayed there um and when i asked the lord earlier in the day what should i do today lord and he said video and i thought what what am i going to video and then rattlesnake occurred so i think the lord really had that intent intended um, I don't know if he made the rattlesnake crawl up, but I know he made the rattlesnake stop at four feet from me instead of two feet. I know that was a miracle, and that was a big one, because I was just out of his range, and he was still thinking about striking me. I mean, he was really rattling fast. So anyway, that's kind of an addendum to rattlesnake. Now, as we go here with this current video, number 19 in the Angelic series, and Rattler is in the Adventure series, but I guess it's Angelic too, because that was a miracle that God saved my life from that rattlesnake. I'm 73 years old. I get bitten by a, a diamondback rattlesnake, um, five foot long diamondback rattle, western diamondback rattlesnake, at 73 years old as, um, you know, I mean, it's not a good thing for anybody to run into that kind of thing, especially a, a child or an older person like me. Um, there's a good chance, um, there's a good chance you're done. It's really going to be tough on your body, and uh, that's heavyweight poison. So anyway, that's that with that. Now let's go on to this video, this number 19 in my angelic series. 
And uh, um, the, the meek or the bold? Well, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 5, that um, the, the, the meek shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Well, you know that earth is hell, right? You've watched my other videos, you know for a fact that the authorized King James Bible tells us that earth is hell. So why would you want to inherit hell? And the meek? Who's meek? Jesus is meek. The Bible says he's meek. John the Baptist is meek. We's obviously right there with Jesus. Um, uh, I don't mean with Jesus, but I mean on the side of Jesus, God Almighty. Jesus was God for three and a half years. Watch my previous videos. So what I want to do here is I want to highlight something here. There's, there's some piggybacking going on here with meekness and boldness that I want you to recognize uh, and, and see the difference between those two things. Because Jesus didn't make any mistakes. I mean, he's filled with the Holy Ghost of God Almighty, um, saying that the meek shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You're going to be surprised when we get to this. It's never been said before, but you're going to you're going to um, really be surprised, and I think you'll agree 100% with me on this um, and with the Bible. Um, but before we get there, you really need to watch my previous videos. Um, this is pretty heavy stuff. It all is. So let's take a look at Luke 7, and um, let's go to, to uh, before uh, Luke 7, 18, um, it, Jesus has uh, resurrected uh, a person. He was dead, resurrected a guy. He, uh, he also uh, healed a guy that was dying. Um, and so now uh, these people are, are talking about Jesus. And it says, And the disciples of John showed him of all these things. And go on to Luke 7, 19. And it says, And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? John was in prison. Uh, um, it doesn't say this in the Bible, but picture in my mind is they've got him chained to a wall in a dungeon and bars on it, and in prison. And, uh, and and I think he probably stayed there for about six months. I don't have any way to back this up. It just feels like it to me, for whatever that's worth. And, uh, and then they cut his head off. They beheaded him. Um, and so John, you know, he, he's not privy to anything that's going on in the world at all. He's, he's separated from what's going on with uh, Jesus and all these miracles that Jesus is doing on all this stuff. So John knew who he was. Uh, and he baptized him, and and um, and then they, you know, they put him in prison, and so cut him off from what's going on in the world. So he's wondering here. He tells his disciples, he says, "Art thou he that, that should come, or look we for another? Is this Jesus really the guy that I said he was?" Hard on John back then. When the men were come unto him, they said, "John Baptist." hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? This is emotional for me. As a lot of the things are in the Bible, a lot of power. Luke 7, 21, And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of, of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way, and tell John, what things ye have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the deaf are raised, the dead are raised. To the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whoever, whosoever shall not be offended in me. There's Jesus speaking all the way through here. And when the messengers of John were departed, to go tell John, yeah, this is guy, this is him, this is the guy, this is Jesus. You were right. He began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what ye what what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously appareled and live in delicacy are in king's courts. 
but this is Jesus still speaking here. And what went ye out for to see, a prophet? And Jesus says, Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger, messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way for thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Well, why is the least in the kingdom of God greater than John the Baptist? But John is greater, is not, there's not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Of all time, essentially, what this is talking about. How can, how can any of that be? Well, because he's constrained by being in a pile of flesh. And um, somebody that's in heaven, the least in heaven, is greater than John the Baptist because that ghost angel spirit in heaven isn't constrained by being imprisoned in a pile of flesh like John the Baptist was. And it says, um, Jesus is saying here, For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist? Well, John, yeah, he, he said this is, the, this is the Christ, this is Jesus. This, this, is, this is him that we look for. Strong, heavy weight prophet. Absolutely, John the Baptist was. But greater than any of all prophets? What about Solomon? What about Isaiah? I mean, what about Ezekiel? Look what they wrote. Solomon wrote Proverbs. Solomon wrote the Song of Solomon. Solomon wrote the, the Book of Ecclesiastes. Isaiah wrote a huge book with tremendous prophecy in it. Ezekiel, look what he wrote. Huge prophecy. He, 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 he prophesied about the backside of the Bible when you take a look at Ezekiel 2.10. And John the Baptist was greater than all those prophets? Yes, he was. How? Because he was the same as all those prophets. How can that be? Because John the Baptist was filled with the ghost of Elijah. And so were all those prophets that I just mentioned, Solomon, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and all those books were written by those men, those piles of flesh that were filled with the Holy Ghost, God's of, with the ghost of Elijah, God's fifth-born son in heaven and the earth's leading messenger. That's how John the Baptist was so great because of his spirit. Read it again. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a... <laughs> Guess what just hit me here? Well, everybody was born of a woman, right? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not Melchizedek. Melchizedek was not born of a woman. No father, no mother. No beginning, no end. Melchizedek was God Almighty himself in the flesh. That's why he's saying that here. And I just, it just hit me right now between the eyes as I'm reading it to you. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him and the publicans, the public, publicans are um, tax collectors. And he didn't like what their behavior. Matthew was a publican, though, <laughs> so they could be changed. And the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. So these, these people were baptized by John the Baptist. They were his followers. So they went to tell John in prison what Jesus had said. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves being not baptized of him. That's because they worshiped their tradition more than they worshiped the truth, the Pharisees. And the Lord said, whereunto then, whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation, and to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another, 
and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. Ye have mourned, we have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say he hath a devil. Now here are all these Pharisees, these onlookers here that, uh, that are, really aren't doing anything to support God's kingdom of righteousness. They're bowing down to their traditions. You see that all around you today, don't you folks? People bowing down to their traditions rather than the truth. A lot of them are going to be doing that with these videos. That, and you, when they start to read the backside of the Bible, they'll be doing the same thing. A lot of them. I hope they'll change and repent. Repent ye, the kingdom of heaven is at hand for them too. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say he hath the devil. They said he's crazy. He's nuts. John the Baptist is a is crazy loon. He's crazy. He hath a devil. Judge not that ye be not judged, folks. Let's see what they say about Jesus. They're speaking about Jesus as Jesus speaking here. In Luke 7, 34, The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. These are the Pharisees. These are the these are the black call these are the uh, these are the pots calling the kettle black. They're both black, you know, from cooking things in them. Um, <laughs> and, and they say, "Oh, not us!" You know, yeah, yeah, we got old food all over us, but no, we're clean. Really, Pharisees? The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and ye say, "Behold, a gluttonous man, a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners." They're saying Jesus is a drunk. He's a partier and a drunk. He's with people all the time. These hordes of people are with him, and he's eating, and he's drinking wine. Wine's a spirit, by the way. He's filled with the spirit, folks. Spirit of wine? Wine symbolizes spirit. Wine symbolizes ghost. Wine symbolizes angels. Wine symbolizes the Holy Ghost. Jesus was filled with spirit, filled with wine, filled with the Holy Ghost of God Almighty, a drunkard. Uh uh. Far from it. An idolater? Far from it. Son of man has come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. Now yeah, he's trying to save everybody, including the publicans and the sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. So Jesus stood up for John the Baptist. Very bold behavior. Uh, against a bunch of people that were saying this guy's crazy and calling Jesus a wine bibber, a drunk. Yeah, well, he was filled with the Holy Ghost of God Almighty. He could have driven them with one little pat on the top of their head. Any one of those Pharisees, he could have driven them down to the core of the earth. He was God. With one word, he could have sent them down there. But because he was so meek, he chose not to. But bold? You better believe he was bold. Absolutely bold. Meek and bold at the same time? You bet it happened. And it still happens today. John the Baptist, you think he was meek? He was. He didn't fight with anybody. They attacked him um, verbally and then put him in prison. You, you think that he wasn't being bold, though? When the Pharisees mocked him and said, Hey, baptize us. Tee hee, baptize us. He said, Bring me, he said, You bunch of vipers, poisonous snakes. You bunch of generation of vipers, he said. You generation of vipers, bring me, re, um, bring me behavior, meat for repentance, and fruits, behavior. Uh, fruits are words and behavior. Bring me fruits, meat thereby for repentance, and I'll baptize you. In other words, if you really meant it, I'd do it. So he was bold, absolutely bold. The, the power of the holy people is God's word. You think those people weren't bold? You bet they preached boldness, absolutely. Let's go on down here and let's see what Jesus does in all of his boldness toward these Pharisees to defend Mary Magdalene. And you watch my previous videos, 
even though Luke 7, 38 doesn't say this is Mary Magdalene, I show you where. In the Bible, it does tell you this is Mary Magdalene with the same event. Let's go to Luke 7, 36, and it says, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner. Wait, now, this is Mary Magdalene, and you got to watch my previous videos. It'll show you in those videos. Mary was never a sinner. She sinned previously, though, in a couple previous lives. Reincarnation is real. You've got to look at my previous videos, or you're just going to say, hey, this guy is not just a wine bibber. Matter of fact, he doesn't drink at all or anything. We can't call him that. He's not a drunk. But he's nuts. He's crazy. He hath the devil, just like what they said about John the Baptist. I promise you that what we're reading here from the authorized King James Bible is what I use to find the truth, and you should too. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. And now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him for she is a sinner. He spoke it within himself. Spoke it within himself. He didn't speak it out loud. He spoke it within himself, this Pharisee. This, Phar this gutless Pharisee. Watch what Jesus says here. And Jesus answering said unto him, because he heard his thoughts. He heard, he interpreted tongues. This guy didn't, this Pharisee didn't speak it out loud. Jesus heard it though. This is God Almighty in the flesh, listening to this guy's thoughts. And Jesus answering, 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 said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. Luke 7, 41. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both, telling me, therefore, tell me there which, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon as the Pharisee. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom the he forgave the most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. 44. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. 47. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same... <clears throat> excuse me, folks. A lot of power here. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they sat, they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. He stood up for Mary Magdalene. See, meek? He didn't tear that Pharisee's head off for berating this little girl. That is God's, by the way, God's firstborn little girl in heaven, Mary, filling the body of Mary Magdalene, his beloved firstborn little girl out of everybody in the universe. That's her. That's her spirit right there. God's sixth-born child right after he created Elijah, just before he created Elisha. Watch my previous videos filled with the spirit of Mary, and he stood up for her. And you heard what, it was, what was said here as I read the Bible. Bold? You better believe he was bold. So, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Why do you want to inherit the earth? The earth is hell. Well, when you read, look at my previous videos, when you get through the, the, the thousand year Sabbath, where 
the righteous are on vacation visiting as ghosts the rest of the universe and um, <clears throat> the earth is a dead planet and Satan is bound in chains because there's nobody left alive on earth to tempt and the earth becomes a dead planet with uh, no oceans they've all dried up then you take a look over as uh, the false prophet comes on to earth and stands on the Mount of Olives and those that go against him he kills and they go over into the holy city of New Jerusalem that's come down from God out of heaven it has boundaries it is an object it is a, pl a place it is a city the holy city of New Jerusalem watch my previous videos or you'll be lost right now in all these uh, words that I'm speaking watch my previous videos and <clears throat> those then that obey the false prophet Satan in the flesh obey the false prophet and go up and in campus in and uh, um, attack essentially the camp of the Saints encompass the camp of the Saints the Bible says God comes down from heaven himself not his Holy Ghost now but himself and he's a consuming fire our God is a consuming fire as Hebrews tells us and is in his presence like, like Peter said even the elements melt with fervent heat and as Zechariah said in 14:12, their their eyes will melt in their holes and their tongues will melt in their mouths by God's tremendous heat anybody in the flesh melts ghosts no problem for us in the holy city of New Jerusalem not a problem at all just light beautiful light and love and um, truth for those that are not uh, uh, if you're against God boy there's plenty of fear there but for <clears throat> let's hear the conclusion of the matter fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man as it says in the book of Ecclesiastes I think it's 12 13 in the book of Ecclesiastes get a concordance and look it up yeah you're you're looking at um, what now everybody's dead except all those of us that are in the holy city of New Jerusalem that have been on vacation for a, a thousand year Sabbath day is uh, a day is as a year and a, uh, a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day to the Lord Sat Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is, is a Sabbath day that's a day of rest one day every week one day God gave it to us as a gift he also gave us a thousand year Sabbath that we should fly throughout the rest of the universe and see those other worlds the second heaven where people have mounted up with wings on those other worlds and live the life of a tree on those other worlds and where lions will lie down with the lamb together and ch a child shall rule over them get on the back of a lion that eats straw and go for a ride as a five-year-old child and the lion won't hurt them that's what it's like in the second heaven that's what it's like on those other worlds outside of hell, which is where you are now. Repent ye, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist said it, Jesus said it. So I'm just repeating what they said. Repent ye the, to God through Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The bold can be meek. The meek can be bold, I should say. All those, all those in the city of uh, New Jerusalem are meek. And everybody else is dead. And they're still here on earth in the holy city of New Jerusalem as ghosts, by the way, angels, spirits. The meek inherited the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Everybody else is dead. That's what it means, folks. That's exactly what it means. Now you know something you never knew before. I bet you none of you knew that. Now you do. I love you all and because it's important for these videos to get out to the world subscribe put the notification bell on so you'll be notified of future videos should i choose to do any of them and i probably will have some adventure videos out too i don't know if there will be any any more angelic series videos or not i thought they were done here we go they keep coming so maybe they'll continue to come it's up to the lord um share it with the whole world as you can however you can with all your uh, media I don't belong to Facebook or any of these other kinds of things but many of you do 
So send it, send this message throughout the whole world because what it does is it gets these videos out there. Share with everybody you know and thumbs up, please, folks. Um, we'll see if you're if there are more of these angelic videos or um, adventure videos or anything else. I don't know. It's up to the Lord. But know this for a fact. My personality may not depict it, but I love you all. And am I meek? Yes, I'm meek. But am I bold? You better believe I'm bold with all of God's words behind me. So should you two be that way also. I love you all, folks. Thanks for listening. See you soon, probably.